All right, everyone, let's get the show started. Gina, if we could turn the music down. Um, welcome to Demo Day 2024, everyone. Um, let's give a round of applause to the 10 teams that are going to present their businesses to you and all the progress that they've made over the summer. I forgot the clicker. I actually need that. I've got a few things to say before we turn it over to the teams. Perfect. So welcome, first of all, from the Innovate at BU team. Most of us are sitting in the back. If you guys can raise your hands, let's give all of the team a round of applause. Oh, in the front, too, uh, for putting on this program. Thank you guys very much. Um, this program is a 10-week program where we take 10 teams and help them make focused progress uh, with coaching, curriculum, and a lot of other supports over the summer. Um, if you are a coach or a mentor, uh, let's also give you a round of applause. You can raise your hands if you've coached teams. We have over 40 people have helped run this program. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. If you're keeping track, that's like a four to one teacher-student ratio. So US News, you know, take note, we're doing well. Um, so with that, the agenda for today, I want to give it over to the teams. We're going to have four-minute pitches from all the teams. I'm very excited for them to present. We're recording this. We've got a camera there. Tatum, if you want to raise your hand. We've got a camera in the back. Uh, and then we're going to go do a reception at Innovate at BU, which is just across uh, the street. And in route, let's see, where's Vishva? Okay, so what we're going to try to do is take a photo outside. If you want to be in the photo, I want you to follow Tatum after she's going to raise her hand we're all going to follow tatum to the window before we go in and vish was going to take a photo of everyone uh, of the new marquee that we have in front of innovate at bu uh if you want to be in the photo that is all right that's pretty much it uh let me just look at my list make sure that i didn't forget anything oh around the room you'll see a qr code if you scan that QR code, it's going to take you to um, a platform called Allstage, where all of the teams have profiles, and you can give them some feedback on their pitches. Um, please do that if you'd like. It would be very helpful for them. Um, last thing, please put your phones on silent, and let's uh, give your attention to the teams. Did I miss anything? Are we good to go? All right, perfect. So first up, Gene is going to load up the presentation for... Mouse Films, are you guys ready? All right, let's give Mouse Films a round of applause. Here you go. Um, yes. Oh. Is there any here? Ooh, let me know when I can start. All right. Hi, everybody. We're Mouse Films. I'm Sanjana, and the little box you see there is my co-founder, Ren. Hi, everyone. I'm Ren, um, and today we're going to be pitching our company to you. So Ren and I are both from India. Um, if you forgot, you guys know what India is, obviously. Um, in case you forgot, the clicker is also not working. Sorry. Uh, all right. Oh, well, some pictures of India, or at least the India seen through Hollywood's lens. As you can see, this is this is a film called Outsourced, and these are stills that are depicting really stereotypical assumptions about life and culture in India. And we dug a little deeper and found out that it was actually the film was actually made by a white American man and not a South Asian filmmaker, which was a problem. And Hollywood has a long history of erasing and misrepresenting BIPOC stories, as seen in films like Green Book, The Lone Ranger, and Aloha, where white actors, writers, and directors have mishandled these narratives. Such practices erase authentic voices to sell an inaccurate culture appropriation for millions. And what's worse is that the leads of BIPOC origin make up only 27% of films in Hollywood, and that number is even less for BIPOC directors, landing at a 19%. This is very jarring considering that 65% of America's audience is BIPOC. 
And this is where Moss Films comes in. At Moss Films, we're dedicated to bringing authentic and innovative BIPOC stories to life. We collaborate with exceptional BIPOC filmmakers and writers, ensuring that both in front of and behind the camera, the right voices are heard and celebrated. The way we do this is we hyper-focus on two parts of the production process. One is development and one is distribution. So for development, take the example of our film, Peace and Glory. The first draft was shown to a, a writer's room consisting of three to four BIPOC writers. We went through a couple of edits over the course of eight months and we landed onto the script that we eventually produced. Um, in distribution terms, we use what we have. We have budget-friendly methods, just local screenings in our local in our cities, film festivals, and also we leverage our social media platforms to gain a wider audience. So since 2020, there's been a huge popularity in independent films. Um, so much so that the revenue has risen to $1.63 billion as of 2023. More than that, audiences' tastes have also changed. They're leaning more towards independent movies with companies like Neon and A24 leading the charge in the box office with $218 million as of 2023. We're implementing a 360 uh, business model to generate financial flow for mass films. Uh, we will host quarterly film festivals and screenings in Los Angeles aimed to attract young cinephiles, filmmakers, and potential collaborators, generating $700 to $900 per event from ticket sales and merchandise. Additionally, we'll also create um, micro short films called vignettes for social media, leveraging um, influencer marketing and brand collaborations. And we'll also monetize off of the films on niche streaming platforms. This will result in a monthly gross income of $1,000, $1,050 to $1,400. The funds earned will support our films, development, production, and team compensation. Of course, our vision is to increase our scale in one to two years as we grow. Now to better understand our target audience, we categorize them into different stakeholder groups, including independent filmmakers, cinephiles, and industry professionals. We ourselves are part of this target group. Uh, we're Asian immigrants and we have a passion for film and representation. We've worked in a lot of entertainment companies throughout our careers and so think that we are well fitted to run mouse films. Over the summer, we have grown a lot. We have started to think very differently about our future and we have a couple of asks of you. Today, our um, first ask, would be about mentorship. Um, if you know of anyone with expertise in angel investing, we would love to connect with them. Our second ask is about funding. Since we are a production company, we do want to produce actual films. And so for our next project, we're looking for a $25,000 budget. And uh, last but not least, we would love for you to follow our journey on social media and hope that you can be a part of our growing creative community. Thank you. Thank you. All right, round of applause for Mouse Films. Nice job. I'll take the mic. Thank you. Great job. Uh, Pro Munch, you ready? This is part of it. <laughs> All right, give him a round of applause. Here you go, Park. <laughs> How many of you in the room are vegetarians? That's not a big number, but that's right. Uh, so as you also, uh, I am a fitness enthusiast as well as a vegetarian. And I, when I was uh, working in the pandemic, I was not able to meet my daily protein intake. And after trying different snacks in the market, such as potato chips, peanuts, and chickpea snacks, I found out that they are just high in calories and not in protein. And after talking to fellow uh, fitness enthusiasts who are vegetarians, I realized that that lies a bigger problem with more than 70% of the Indian population deficient in protein. That's when I realized that I had to help these 70% and uh, I was one of those. And after 85 iterations in my kitchen and less trials and tasting sessions, I got my hands on a revolutionary snack, Pro Munch. It contains 48% plant-based protein, it's vegan, it's gluten-free, and it's tasty, of course. It comes in four flavors and it's available on Amazon India as well as Amazon US and Walmart. 
Uh, these are a few achievements that we have uh, done till date. We have sold more than 118,000 units. Uh, we were awarded the Amazon's uh, choice tag on Amazon India. Uh, we are present across a few domains such as corporate gifting, uh, airports, and uh, protein shops. This, uh, these pictures have been sent us to our customers who have been using our jar, uh, jars as reusable uh, planters as well as for keeping their daily toothbrushes and everything. Uh, these are a few metrics uh, that we are really proud about, uh, mainly the repeat order rate, which is more than the industry average. Uh, these are a few rave reviews. I'm sure there are a lot many more on Amazon as well as we kept getting on uh, Instagram. And uh, one of my favorite ones being the one uh, where uh, the lady says that her seven-year-old daughter loves it to the core. And uh, there are five people in our team, including me, and we have combined experience of 29 years. Uh, the summer has been really nice for us, and uh, we are on a mission to revolutionize the world of uh, protein snacking, and our ask is simple to be a part of the community, as well as uh, stay updated on our next things, uh, where we help athletes uh, be the best version of themselves. Thank you. All right. Round of applause for Pro Munch. Thanks, Park. I'll take that. Nice job. Open Lake. You ready? Ready. Here you go. How are we doing, everyone? Good to see everyone. Uh, one, one, sec, one second before I let Gina transition real quick. Before you kick it off. That actually wasn't part of my pitch, but fun fact, I took a class in this lecture once, and during my midterm, I had an asthma attack. So let's hope that doesn't happen again. All right. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, thanks. All right. Open Lake. Uh, my name is, oh, can I get the clicker actually real quick? Sorry. Open Lake. My name is Milan Taliani. I'm a fresh BU grad, just graduated with a degree in computer science. Um, quick question for the room. Uh, who here has used data before in their business, in their life? Great. Who here is interested in learning how AI can help make them more money? Another question. Great. Yeah. Well, truth is, you're not alone. Uh, see, it's no secret that right now, humanity is on the precipice of a never-before-seen surge of innovation and technological advancement. And in light of this fact, enterprises around the world are pouring billions of dollars into data and AI infrastructure. In fact, over 90% of chief technology officers say that data integration is critical for ongoing business growth. 83% of U.S. companies are prioritizing AI, and the market is expected to be valued at over $1 trillion by 2030. So what we are seeing are these global, macro-level, industry-agnostic shifts towards data and AI. And it's for good reason, right? I mean, it's essentially the promised land. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. In fact, there are a few key problems that go into implementing a well-oiled data infrastructure and optimized AI strategy for your business. And most importantly, small businesses and SMEs are bogged down by these complex challenges. This leads to higher costs and wasted resources in implementing these strategies. Maybe worst of all, mismatched expectations where you get really excited about a new feature or a new capability, and then the development timeline is way longer than it should be, and the feature doesn't come out as you originally imagined. And this really sucks. This is really bad because your data and AI strategy should be reducing costs, should be saving the resources, and ultimately aligning your teams towards your shared vision for your business and your product. So in light of these problems, what is there? Enter Open Lake the data and AI one-stop shop. We offer a suite of bespoke data and AI solutions that are tailored for your business, including but not limited to data strategy and consulting, integration and ETL, big data analytics, and AI machine learning development and AI powered automation. So what sets us apart from all the other services-based companies that are out there? Well, we intimately understand the unique challenges that are faced by small businesses and SMEs so we are focused on startups and SMEs. This includes end-to-end -end solutions. Part of this is also flexible staffing options. So we will source and manage uh, cost-effective and efficient developer talent for you. We have community engagement. So we partnered with a number of free newsletters so everyone here can learn exactly how they could use data and AI for free, totally free of charge. And all of this is uh, on a flexible pay-as-you-go model. So making it very, very cost-effective and appealing to those resource-strapped startups that we are all very familiar with being. 
And so rather than talk about it, rather than talk about it at a high level, let's take a look at some of the amazing results that we've had for some of our customers. Uh, this is Friend Metrics. They are a about a 12 person company, B2B SaaS. Um, before Open Lake, they were really getting crushed. They were actually uh, about to go out of business until they hired us. And we saw some amazing value props with our solutions. Uh, notably, we reduced their average integration time from three weeks to 48 hours. We reduced their average integration cost from $6,000 to $60. Yes, that's correct. Uh, they were spending thousands of dollars on unnecessary tools, wasting their developers' time. Uh, and finally, and perhaps most notably, their onboarding time for a new client went from five weeks to one week using our solution, which means that they could bring on clients, new clients, in just one week. Uh, next, we have Spinnaker Analytics. They are uh, an insurance tech firm uh, based out of Boston here. Um, we saw some pretty amazing statistics with them as well, uh, decreasing their data cataloging time. We uh, eliminated their integration maintenance costs. They were paying $3,000 a month for a tool, for a maintenance tool, uh, where maintenance is just one of our many features that we offer. And uh, using a nifty AI Excel plugin, we decreased their report generation time by 98%. Um, and finally, um, uh, Jersey Hotel Group, uh, they were really dealing uh, with problems with employee retention and customer satisfaction. So we developed them a custom AI product that addresses these issues and are seeing some pretty good value props there. So those are all the solutions we have so far. Uh, would love to see if anyone wants to help or get on board and just have a conversation. If you have projects in the data or AI space that you're interested in, uh, partnerships with other service providers or referrals to anyone that you know who's evaluating AI. Um, that would be very much appreciated. Or if anyone just wants to have a chat about data, AI, or anything in general, uh, you can shoot me an email right there, or send me a WhatsApp or text, and I'd be happy to connect. Thank you all very much. All right, round of applause for Open Lake. Thanks, Milan. Thank you. We'll put that down right here. Thanks very much. Next up, we've got Connect Plus. Rachel, are you ready? You can take that. And the mic, just make sure that's on. Perfect. There you go. All right, and wait for Gina. At 15 years old, I boarded a plane to the US, leaving behind my family in a small town in Southern China. The moment I landed at the airport, the first time I walked through the doors of my new high school in Queens, I knew it was on my own hand to craft a life here. It was a bumpy road, but here I am, soon to be the first in my family to graduate from college, being driven and res thank you, <laughs> being driven, Being driven and resourceful is essential, but without the teachers who spent hours with me on my first English essay, mentors who introduced the business program to me, and peers who supported me through highs and lows, I wouldn't be standing here today as one of the lucky few. Across the nation, more than half of the undergraduates in the US are first-generation college students but a third of them drop out within three years. I want you to meet Kay. She's one of the 40% of fashion students experiencing clinically significant depressive disorder, a number twice the national average. She struggled with dual responsibility of being a high achieving student and a caregiver at home. She couldn't turn to her family for support due to knowledge and network gap. And we talked to other 60 students who are like, hey, and we found that first gen students and graduates crave a community. Connections to peers not only offers firsthand perspectives, unspoken tips and resources, but also serves as a beacon of hope. Seeing others who have navigated gave them a sense of community and trust. And that's why we created Connect Plus a by first gen for first gen peer consultation platform that's uniquely positioned to bridge the gap among peers. Meet Connect Plus, your personalized mentor network right in your pocket. We find you the right mentor. We match students based on needs, expertise, academic goals, and professional developments. Once matched, students can directly schedule a, calendar, schedule a meeting through their calendar link we find you the necessary support. For example, 
freshman Christy is confused about how to waive her student health insurance. Having, go, having been through that process myself, I share my experiences and the resources I use in the comment section. For our discovery interview, we validated the problems and interests from, from students to, to participate. Next, we'll be running an experiment to validate the action. Remember K with Connect Plus and the support of a community. We can help students like K to not just to return to campus each year, but to thrive and rewrite their family history. Just as I stood on the shoulders of many who supported me, these first-gen graduates will continue to lift as they climb at every step of their journey. And I invite you to join us. Thank you. Great job. Round of applause for Connect Plus. Thanks, Rachel. Next up, we've got Baro. You guys ready? Oh, take both of them. Yep. There you go. You sure? What? I think it's on. How do I? Which do I do? Hello, my name is Allie Reeves. And I'm Emily Mooney. I'm an MBA student at BU. And we are the co founders of Baro. And so this came as a shock to some of our cohort members, but we are actually 30 years old. Um, and something, I know we look so young, um, <laughs> and something that happens when you turn 30 is that all of your friends decide to get married, including my friend Emily here. So last summer, Emily got married, and I was so excited to be a part of her big day. But months leading up to the wedding, I was so anxious thinking to myself, what am I going to wear? Because when you're going to one or two formal events a year, it's really easy to just buy something new. But when you have to go to three, four, five, six, seven plus events a year, all with different dress codes, the price adds up really quick. And it's not just Allie that feels this. It's part of a much larger problem that our consumers are feeling. We are buying so much more than we used to, and we're wearing it far less. And this is due to a multitude of factors but essentially, it's that we are feeling all this pressure to dress new because of social media, you post it on Instagram, it becomes old. And because of the rise of fast fashion and how easy it is to purchase something. And so Emily and I started to talk more about this problem that it felt like everyone that we knew was going through. We started to think about back in college, how it was so easy to just walk down your dorm room hall and there was tons of closets that you could borrow from. But as we've gotten older, we've lost that sense of a community closet. And because we've lost that, we stopped borrowing and we started buying way more. In fact, it equates to 92 million tons of textile waste a year, which if you look at this photo, it is that trash every single second of every day. And so what we've done at Borrow is we're using technology to recreate that organic sharing experience that we once did. Um, but now you're not limited to just the people who live down the hall from you. Now you can borrow from women who have the same size as you, the same body type as you, the same style as you from all across the country. And you can borrow from them easily with the click of a button. And so now Allie has access to luxury on the Borrow app. And instead of buying those seven dresses, she can rent them. And what we found is that our users on Borrow are only paying 15% of that original retail cost. And on the other side of our marketplace, we have the lenders who are making upwards of $1,000 on those articles of clothing that go unused in their closets. And Borrow, well, we're making 18% on every single transaction. And so this is a real Borrow user. Her name is Abby. She found Borrow, rented a dress, had a great experience, and she's come back again and again over the past few months for every single event that she's had. And since we launched the app seven months ago, we've seen consistent growth quarter over quarter in users on both sides of the marketplace. We're revenue generating and we're adding new inventory every single day. And we know that there are millions of Abbeys out there. The women's clothing market is massive and it's primed to be disrupted. And we know that in part because it happened 10 years ago. So 10 years ago, platforms like Depop and Poshmark in the peer-to-peer -peer resale space really disrupted the e-commerce industry. At the same time, platforms like Rent the Runway brought this idea of clothing rental mainstream. And while we really admire what Rent the Runway has done in familiarizing our target audience with this concept, there are obvious limitations in the way that they operate. And so we are combining the elements of both of these business models to fill this white space in the market and give our customers the solution that they actually want. And we know that we're the right team to do it. 
We have expertise in marketing, in fashion, in finance, in operations, in engineering, and in AI. And so our ask today is really to continue the conversation. I think that what we've presented in the past four minutes is just scraping the surface of everything that we have done and everything that we plan to do. Um, I wanna thank Tom. I think that this accelerator has really taught us that we're ready. We're ready to take our business to the next phase. And so we will be raising around this fall. So I invite anybody who wants to join us um, to connect with us, also download the app and uh, why buy when you can borrow. Give a round of applause for all the teams we just heard. And let's give another round of applause for Astro Wellbeing. Come on up here. There you go. Clicker. Hi, everyone. We are Astro Wellbeing, a digital wellness platform for healthcare organizations. Before I get started, I want to introduce you to Nurse Jones a critical care nurse at the Boston Medical Center who I had the opportunity to interview. He told me this, with this job, I often feel, experience feelings that no one should ever have to experience. It's tough spending every day taking care of everybody else when I barely get any support myself. It often makes me ask myself, why am I still doing this? So what's the problem affecting Nurse Jones and the millions of frontline healthcare employees across our nation? Well, currently we're ongoing the healthcare employee retention crisis which is that our nation's healthcare employees are leaving their jobs in mass numbers. They're suffering from uh, hospitals are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars on turnover costs. Clinicians are suffering from unprecedented mental health issues. And so among top causes of this is the lack of support and engagement that these healthcare workers receive. And the resources out there to combat this are heavily underutilized, which is why at Astro Wellbeing, we focus on the root problem of utilization and engagement with existing wellness resources. So that's why we developed Astro Wellbeing, which is a digital wellness platform designed to provide streamlined recognition and wellness to healthcare employees on demand at any time, anywhere, on any device. On a high level, how our platform works is that we integrate with existing um, hospital systems and provide different sorts of smart engagement, notified gamifications, and AI-powered insights and analytics to show that wellness resources can actually be utilized and work with healthcare um, organizations. So where has our platform been today and how have we tested this? We piloted our platform over 2023 to over 700 users, um, where we saw an astonishing 17,000 messages of support sent through our platform in just 60 days. We saw a 76% user engagement rate, and in our post-survey post analysis, we saw a 5% decrease in intent to leave within two years. As a result of these pilots, we were able to form some really big partnerships, including with the Massachusetts Hospital Association, which is the leading association for the state of Massachusetts with, with almost every single Massachusetts hospital under their member jurisdiction, and Commonwealth Purchasing Group, who has over 900 health centers and small hospitals in the nation and is the biggest GPO. Both of them are partners with us and are helping sell, market, and promote our platform to healthcare um, facilities nationwide, starting on the East Coast with who we're targeting right now, which um, if we close the facilities we're talking to, we'll put us at $250,000 in revenue. Just to show how these partnerships scale, this is our path to one and 10 million in revenue, again, just with these two partnerships alone. And so the team behind this is myself. I just graduated from BU with a degree in business and healthcare and I'm doing Astra full time. Shannon McPeak is our chief wellness officer. She's been a nurse for the past 10 years and suffered from burnout and depression herself, serving as a nurse, inspiring her to join our team and lead our mental health and wellness content. And Tim's our CTO, whose experience speaks from itself with his time at Google. We also have an esteemed advisory board ranging from hospital executives to frontline advocates and clinicians to the chief medical officer of Microsoft. With our partners, I explained our sales partners um, Microsoft's our technology partner. We are one of 20 startups across the globe selected for their global startup initiative to really help Azure AI technology and Operation Happiness as our wellness content provider. And also with the Massachusetts Hospital Association for the first time ever in their history, they have invested into us as well. So our ask from you is three parts. One is to use our distribution partners to really land our first 10 clients. Um, that also involves our second thing of really playing with our messaging and value proposition in order to sell our platform to these complex hospitals. And third is our pre-seed round. Um, we set out to raise $500,000. We closed a third of it in three weeks and then kind of paused it as we kind of really focused on the sales channels. So eventually coming back to that round in the future. And so the last thing I want to ask you is if you remember Nurse Jones from the first slide I presented. 
Well, Nurse Jones was actually a user in one of our pilots. And after his 60 days with us, he told us this. I've been a nurse for 30 plus years and COVID brought on so much negativity into our hospital. But using this platform reminded me that I'm not alone. It put me in the mood I used to feel when I first became a nurse. That's the impact that we hope to achieve on a local, national, and global level. So thank you, and we hope you join us on our mission of creating a better tomorrow for the millions of frontline healthcare employees across our nation, one message at a time. All right, round of applause for Astra. Thanks, Johar. I'll take that. Okay, thank you. Um, RX Healthcare, you ready? Here you go. Give Gina a minute. Growing up in a small village in Nepal, life was simple and full of closely neat community ties. And among the cherished memories is my cousin sister, Sita, who was the most beloved child in our family. One day, Sita was bitten by a snake. Our family took her to the hospital. The nearest hospital was two hours away and by the time the poison had already spread, and our family had to endure the heartbreaking loss of their daughter. This tragic event is the stark reminder of healthcare inaccessibility, not only in my village, not only in my country, but many such communities across the world. And with the determination to bring the change, I pursued medical education and became the first doctor for my village. With this achievement came the profound sense of responsibility, the responsibility to, to prevent tragedies like Sita from happening again. And when I was working in remote areas in Nepal, the beautiful landscape often conceals the tragedy of healthcare inaccessibility. Most of the people in these areas, they rely on the pharmacy stores like this. And there are 30,000 such pharmacies in Nepal. And even the study suggests that Indian sub in, in, in Indian subcontinent, most of the people, they rely on this type of pharmacy stores as their first point of healthcare contact. And this realization was pivotal. And it was when COVID hit, it made the health care more worse. And that's when out of pure necessity, we collaborated with 50 remote pharmacies and with the help of my city doctor friends, we started providing video consultations using WhatsApp and Messenger. And this successful experiment led to the foundation of NHealth. Now with NHealth, we transform these pharmacies, they are providing spaces. We equip them with the cutting edge medical tools. We connect doctors through platform we manage prescriptions, we manage patient records, and we even manage their inventory. Thus transforming these pharmacies, the outdated line of pharmacies into modern, efficient, and powerful teleclinics. And they get incentivized too. In the total transactions, we, they get on an average a minimum of 20% on these transactions. The telemedicine market is growing exponentially. Relative to the global market, it's the same with the South Asian market and Nepalese market too. And throughout the accelerator program, we did a lot of surveys, we onboarded doctors, we developed our MVP, and we started testing our consultations. And we are aggressively pursuing our timeline. We did a lot in the last 10, 10 weeks, and in the next six months, we plan to roll out into 50 different stores. And we need funding. We are seeking funding to make that happen. And we're not alone. We have a team back home, and we are guided by wonderful coaches here. So standing here today, I invite you all, when I reflect upon the memories of Sita and the journey that brought me here, I invite you all to be part in this mission to make healthcare more accessible, available, and affordable. 
It's an honor to share our story with you all. Thank you. All right. Thanks, and your help. Great job. Thanks. Udaya, ready? Here's a clicker. Good evening, everyone. Um, I think everyone in this room can imagine what it must be like to start your own business. I'd like you to imagine what it must be like to spend months, maybe years, working on your project, your idea, your business model, just to watch it all go down the drain because of a lack of funding. Now I'd like you to imagine doing this 21 different times by the age of 17. I'm happy to share my experiences across high school with social entrepreneurship and talk about why that has led me to establish Odaya Impact Foundation. So I grew up in Hyderabad, India, and I attended an international school where my high school requirements was actually to come up with a service learning project of my own. One major project that actually demonstrated my leadership abilities, my creativity, and my dedication to the community around me. And I did this. I did this 21 times. I came up with things like animal rescue operations in my city, all the way to establishing rural schools in tribal hamlets in my state. And I, I learned a lot from all of these projects. Unfortunately, today, I'm I'm happy to say that every single one of them has faded away or failed in some sense of the word. And I'm happy to say this because I realized that I wasn't alone in this situation, not only because of the funding problems that I faced, but in building a strategy or in expanding my visibility for my idea. These were three problems that not only me, but many students across India face constantly. In my city alone, there are over 200 international schools that have the exact same requirements for all their high school students. 3,000 across India, and we estimate that there's 400,000 students that are going to be starting their social impact projects every year. And they're inevitably going to face these three problems, which is why we established Udaya Impact Foundation. Udaya is a crowdfunding platform dedicated to championing student-led ideas. This is because we believe that students can make lasting, sustainable change for their communities given the right tools and guidance. Now, you might have an idea of what crowdfunding is like based on GoFundMes or Kickstarters, but Adaya goes quite a ways further to make sure that the experience is tailored for students. In doing that, we improve accessibility by offering a lot of strategic resources and a lot of mentorship opportunities across the board. Our platform design is also extremely unique, and we focus on connecting students' personal stories and visions with donors firsthand. We're the only nonprofit platform out there right now which is, has multiple benefits, first of which we're able to offer each one of our donors a tax reward or benefit. We're 5% at our platform fees, and we are able to ask schools to endorse our platform directly to their students. And the feature that I'm probably most excited to share with you is how we optimize success. Now, every donor when making a financial contribution has one thing in the back of their mind, which sometimes even stops them from making their donation, which is how do I know that my money is going to the right place? And in order to combat this, we've created a reporting framework through our platform that makes it really easy to streamline exactly what impact has been made, how much funds were used, what the next steps are. And it's very easy for a student to be able to articulate this perfectly with their donor. And what this does is engage and retain each one of their donors, setting them up for success in the long run. So speaking of success, our most recent campaign was completed just a few weeks ago. A student from Hyderabad who had been working on a project for two years, um, who was a classical dancer since childhood, found a lot of connection to her heritage and identity through the performing arts. And she decided to bring this to an orphanage in her city. Um, as she starts Stanford in the fall, she was going to have to give up this entire project. But through Adaya, she was able to raise six months worth of funding in 24 hours. And she's now got plans to expand to the next four orphanages in that locality with an eventual vision of creating Rural Artisans Fund. This is just one of many great examples of student ideas that have taken flight given the right tools and guidance through Adaya. So our ask today is, is twofold. I could talk about student ideas forever, but we've got um, all of them featured on our website, social media, and, um, and more. So get in touch with us and connect with us through there. And the second thing is, uh, if you know a student who aligns with our mission, we are actually hiring student web developers and designers. So connect us in that regard as well. Thank you for your time. All right, thanks, Udaya. Round of applause. Thanks, Tanya.
Next up, Cypher Sonic. You ready? Hello, everyone. I'm Rashmi. I'm the co-founder of Cyphersonic Labs. So let me tell you an interesting story. My friend Alice, she dreamt of seeing Taylor Swift in person in 2023. And she was one of the lucky few to secure a ticket to Taylor Swift concert. Little did she know that few months down the line, Ticketmaster will get hacked and her personal information will be compromised along with others. Hackers got into Ticketmaster platform and stole information of more than 560 million Ticketmaster customers. And the personal information included email addresses, date of births, and sensitive credit card information. And this is not a single standalone incident that happens. It happens way more than you think. Georgia Tech got hacked, impacting 1.3 million individuals. United Healthcare and at and got hacked, impacting one in three people living in America today. And hackers don't stop here. The estimates put the annual cost of cybercrime worldwide at more than 13 trillion US dollars by 2028. So why do you think this problem exists? The reason is when you interact with platforms like Ticketmaster, you enter your personal information on the platform and your personal data goes to the cloud for processing. When the data goes to the cloud for processing, it is encrypted. However, the data needs to be decrypted on the cloud before processing. And when the decryption happens, the hackers get into the system and steal your personal information. So can we protect this? Yes. At Cyphersonic Labs, we provide the much needed data security and privacy by keeping the data encrypted throughout its journey. So data is encrypted at rest, in transit, or while processing. So now, using a technology called fully homomorphic encryption, the data can be processed, encrypted on the cloud, and it doesn't have to be decrypted. So this sounds fantastic, right? So why, why don't everyone just adopt this technology? The reason is the technology itself is super slow. And that is where our innovation comes into picture. We have developed the world's first complete FPGA-based fully homomorphic encryption solution, which enables processing encrypted data in the cloud. And it is very easy for the enterprise clients to adopt it. On the client side, they just need to add a code snippet to perform encryption and decryption operations. And on the cloud side, we program the existing FPGAs, which are present in the cloud, to process the encrypted data. And that is our secret sauce. So when compared to our competitors, we are three orders of magnitude faster than our software competitors who provide similar solution, but which is only software based. And because we are faster, we are more affordable because now you require less compute resources on the cloud. And, uh, and in comparison to our hardware, uh, hardware solution only competitors, we are easy to deploy because we use commercial off the shelf FPGA hardware, which already exists in the cloud. So no new hardware has to be added in the cloud. And this makes us future proof as well. And to validate the market potential, we have been talking to various companies, uh, enterprise clients, and uh, these are the few enterprise clients who are interested in piloting our technology. And looking at the sheer volume of uh, organize, or, or organizations that process sensitive data uh, in the cloud, we are looking at a, at a $2 billion market opportunity. And this is our team. Uh, the founding team consists of Ajay and me, and we are the world leaders in developing an FPGA-based fully homomorphic encryption acceleration solution. We have four external advisors who are helping us on the business and technical front as well. And our ask is uh, $1 million. This is to develop our AWS-based uh, fully homomorphic encryption prototype. 
end to run pilot with multiple enterprises. And we have raised 250K so far, and we are looking forward to raise more to reach the $1 million landmark. And happy to connect offline. Thank you so much. Nice job. Round of applause for Rashmi. Great. Thank you. All right. Technotonin, this is the last one. Here you go. Here you go. Thank you. Hi, we're Technotonin Industries, powering wheelchairs to empower lives. Our friends suffer from muscular dystrophy. This is a degenerative disease that means that their muscles have less mobility over time. Because of this, they need to get new electric wheelchairs every four months. As you can imagine, this is a huge financial problem for their family. Guys, this isn't only a problem for our friends. It's a problem for wheelchair users around the world. One place where this is condensed is assisted living facilities, where the labor cost isn't just pushing someone around. It's the cost of their independence. There are five and a half million wheelchair users in America today, and that number is rising by two million every single year. Hearing and seeing our friends struggle every day is what led us to invent our solution. This is PAW, the portable affordable wheelchair enhancer. With a PAW and a manual wheelchair, you get a power wheelchair. The PAW is an attachable device that drops onto the back of any standard manual wheelchair and makes it electric. It features a modular control system so it can adapt to some person's need. And because of its lightweight and portable design, you don't need to invest in an expensive wheelchair, wheelchair accessible vehicle to transport your device. You can just take it off and put it in the trunk of your car. When consumers look to buy a powered wheelchair, they look for three specific things. The drive setting, the controller system, and how convenient it is to use. The modular control system and the easy installation process of the PAW are the superpowers. And with an easy installation process, one PAW can be used to service multiple people. And with a modular control system, you have a wheelchair that adapts to a person's needs as they change. Our main market is assisted living facilities where there are 4 million wheelchair users. Now, we, want, we plan to use that as a funnel to gain traction and help us get people to use the PAW. This number grows to 5 million when you include rehab centers, personal users, museums, and airports. Right now, we have 13 interested decision makers in PAW and eight wheelchair users. We're also currently demonstrating PAW in senior centers to gain feedback to make sure that our capabilities fit their needs. I'm Antonio Maserati, co-CEO of Technotonin, and I've been working on PAW for three years. I'm Mario Tiagi, co-CEO of Technotonin, and I've also been working on PAW for three years. And we both have a background in robotics. And a special shout out to our innovation coaches, Paul and Ian, for helping us through the incredibly long and windy journey of these past 10 weeks. So if you or someone you know can benefit from the PAW or is interested in our mission, call us, email us, connect with us on LinkedIn, or find us after this, and let's make mobility possible. Yes. Thank you. All right, everyone. So that's all we've got. Um, I want to say thank you to the teams for all of the hard work that you've put into this summer. Um, it's been amazing working with you. It's been incredible working with you. Um, you really inspire me. Um, so we're going to go celebrate you over at Innovative BU. 
Uh, I hope to see you all there too. We can walk right across the street to 7:30 Com Ave, get some snacks and some drinks, uh, and you can meet the teams yourselves. Um, thank you again, everyone, for coming, and I'll see you over there.